Hello everyone, I'm Jess with Black Travelers Network. We provide trips that focus on the Black experience in different parts of the world, but we also cover news that impacts the African diaspora. We have a lot to talk about today. Before we get into today's topic, I just want to say that our latest publication, Out of Service, is available on the website. This is a 26-page publication of simple money-making business ideas you can offer in this environment. We also have where you can pre-order until July 10th, the online workshop, How to Make Money in the COVID Era. Again, you can find these on blacktravelersnetwork.com in our online store. So let's get into it. There's been a lot going on in the news lately regarding the COVID-19 global pandemic. And I wanna bring you up to speed on what's happening in the news because the global pandemic is actually shaping up to be a very political issue. This week, an article came out saying that New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut were beginning to require travelers from states with high coronavirus rates to quarantine for two weeks. This was a joint travel advisory that was issued by the three Democratic governors. Roughly about 48 hours after that, a lawyer out of California filed a lawsuit and sought an emergency temporary restraining order against New York's governor, Andrew Cuomo, over these new restrictions. He argued that this kind of measure is an abridgment of his right to travel and it's also unconstitutional. Now this attorney who filed the lawsuit, his name is John Corbett, and he actually lives in California and maintains a property in Brooklyn, New York. But what's so interesting about this, even though he's in California, this joint travel advisory that was issued by the three Democratic governors largely applied to nine different states. The nine states are Utah, Republican governor, Arizona, Republican governor, Texas, Republican governor, Arkansas, Republican governor, Alabama, Republican governor, Florida, Republican governor. South Carolina, Republican governor. North Carolina, Democratic governor. Washington state, Democratic governor. Now let's go a little bit deeper into the states with the Democratic governor. When you look at North Carolina, the governor in North Carolina is Roy Cooper. What's interesting about North Carolina is, although the governor is a Democrat, the state voted Republican for Trump. The other thing that's worth mentioning is Governor Roy Cooper actually has a working relationship, a cordial relationship with Donald Trump because Trump actually appointed Roy Cooper to to be a part of his White House task force that was focused on combating the opioid crisis. And so Trump went really hard at the North Carolina governor because he wanted North Carolina to be the host of the Republican National Convention. Turns out the Republican National Convention is set to be held in Jacksonville, Florida. They are going to have a day where they will be in North Carolina and they will be able to host the Republican National Convention. And so I highlight this story because I want people to understand the issue with the global pandemic is about more than public health. Many of us are looking at this from a public health standpoint, and that is fine. I will not tell you, you should not look at it from a public health standpoint. You absolutely should. However, I encourage you to also, in addition to looking at it from a public health standpoint, this is a very political issue. Let's be clear. The Democrats and their surrogates are pushing mandatory vaccines. Bill and Melinda Gates, their organizations and surrogates have definitely made big contributions to the Democratic Party and some of its candidates. So if you are African American, this upcoming election asks you a tough question regarding who do you vote for? Do you vote for the racist Republican Party who represents a large number of white supremacists in this country? The party that has been the most affiliated with 
a racist ideology here in America? Or do you vote for the Democrats? The party who is also running a racist candidate in Joe Biden. But, you know, if we look beyond Joe Biden, the Democrats and many of their surrogates have quietly been pushing for mandatory vaccines. In Oregon, the Democrats were pushing a mandatory school vaccination bill, but the Democrats in Oregon let it go to appease the Republicans. There are also six other states, Colorado, Arizona, New Jersey, Washington State, New York, and Maine, who co-sponsored bills that will make it harder for parents to get out of having their children vaccinated. There are other examples of Democrats quietly pushing mandatory vaccinations in and throughout these states. And it's something that, you know, if you're for mandatory vaccinations, great. If you have a little bit of an issue with it, I'd encourage you to look in what your local politicians, where they actually stand on that issue. We also cannot ignore that the Democrats believe in awarding police departments all across America with more funding by calling the agenda police reform. And as most people in the world knows, Black Americans have been very transparent regarding the challenges our community is facing with the police. And so who do you vote for in this upcoming election? Do you vote for the party that's considered to be the more racist of the parties? Do you vote for the party that is connected to mandatory vaccinations and funding the police at the highest of levels? Or do you not vote for either of them? This is very political. Who has the highest numbers? How some states are put on lockdown and other states aren't? And how fast it's spreading in one city or one state compared to the next. Look at it from a public health standpoint, but do not ignore the political aspect of what's going on. I wanna say if you have not subscribed, make sure you click the subscribe button. Thank you guys for listening. If you like this video, don't forget to press the like button. And until next time.